without any waste of may I introduce the speaker for the week whom we have introduced yesterday. It's none other than Dr. Tankiso Litseli, and is a man who is deep in presenting the word of the word of God. So the red carpet has already been laid yesterday. In case you don't know, we are ready and charged. And as such, Dr. Tankiso, as co-host for the week, we will be sailing and driving this ship and with passengers on it. Therefore, I just want to say everybody relax as we approach God's throne with confidence. So I am officially handing over to you, my pastor, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Ronaldo. It, it's indeed a privilege for me to share this morning with you, to share the word of God, and also to share worship with you. I hope I'm loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the topic for this morning, it's going to be forgiveness by grace. Forgiveness by grace. Um, and I realize that we are... This is suppose this this gathering. It's a it's a prayer virtual ministry. Uh, it's not about so many sermons or long sermons. Yesterday I, I I took more time, but but I needed to take more time because I was actually uh, introducing the the source, the fountain of grace. Now we'll be talking about that grace. Uh, I want to see that grace in action. The passage that I'm going to be reading this, uh, this morning comes from the book of Mark. It comes from the book of Mark. I'm going to share the passage with you so that we read it together. It comes from the book of Mark. Uh, it's a, it's, uh, I think this is a familiar story to all of us. Um, let me read this. Let me read it with you so that we get the, the, the context. Then I will zoom to number five. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Verse two, immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Verse three, then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men, four. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd. They uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the par paralytic was lying. Now, this is going to be the passage that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I want you to underline that topic. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. But let's continue so that we get to the gist of the story. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Verse seven, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Uh, verse 9, which is easier, this is Christ asking a, a question, which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the par paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Verse 12, which is the last verse, immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. May God continue to bless the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. The, the passage that we are going to be looking at is the verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the, to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. I'm going to remove the passage that we read. Jesus saw something from their faith. Uh, you, you, you heard the story. Here's a, here's, a, here's a group of four men. They brought their friends 
their friend to Jesus. And the whole idea was to present him to Jesus Christ so that Jesus Christ could heal him. When they got to that house, they could not even gain entrance even to the, through the gate, let alone the house. But they managed to push their way through the gate and got into the yard. And when they got into the yard, the, the house was still jam-packed. They looked through the door and, they, and possibly they discussed among themselves and they said, there's no way that we can go through this. And someone whispered to them, let's use the roof. No one is sitting on the roof. There's a staircase to the roof. So they climbed the roof together with the men. I'm not sure, it must have been a difficult thing to, to be carrying a person, a sick person, a person who's a paralytic. And they managed to get to the roof. I want to believe that what was driving them was, or their mission was, let's take our friend to Jesus. Let's take our friend to Jesus. And when they got there, they discovered that, that there is no staircase from the roof into the house. And they became creative and they ripped the roof of the house. And this has, has never been done before. Uh, they ripped the roof of the house and they lowered the man. Now, Jesus Christ at that time, he was preaching. He was preaching. Now, it is difficult to preach when there is when someone is fiddling with the roof, it's difficult to preach. Before long, even those that were in the house listening to the sermon of Jesus Christ, uh, before long they started looking up because there was an activity at the roof. They could tell that someone is banging and up to the point where the rubble started falling into the, into the house and they managed to open the, a hole big enough to feed the men and they lowered the men and the men landed in front of Jesus Christ. Now I have a picture of these men, these four men. I don't think they lowered their friend and after that walked away. I think after opening that hole, lowering the men, the men landing in front of Jesus Christ, I think that they remained peeping. So Christ saw these four faces looking, at, looking down to him and he was looking up to them. And when he looked at them, and I want to believe it was not just a mere look or a, a casual or a surface look. I think he looked through them and he saw something. The passage says, when Jesus saw their faith, apparently their faith was visible because Christ could see it. There was no way that Christ could have missed that, 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 that faith because that faith drove them to do unconventional things. This is the faith that says, we don't know who owns this house, but what we know, we have a mission to take our friend to Jesus. If ever they are caused to be born after this, we're going to deal with that after. But now our friend must meet Jesus. And the friend met Jesus. And how could Jesus miss that faith. He saw it. He called, he, he, the passage said, when he saw their faith. Now notice, notice something. When he saw their faith, the faith was visible. Now we're moving with the passage. The passage says, he said to the paralytic. So he was looking at the man, looking at the four men up there. And then he changed his uh, focus. He then looked at the man who had landed in front of him. And he said to him, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, this passage itself, it's a minefield of God's grace. And everyone, everyone has the mining rights. We can all mine in this passage and get the gems of God's truth. No, they're, they're the mining fields of this of this world, uh, if you don't have the mining rights, if you are not the Munzipes, if you are not the, the, the Dibiers, if you are not part of the Lon Min, you will, not, you will not have access to the mining rights, but the minefields of God's grace, of God's truth, you and I have the mining rights and we are now going to mine into this passage. Now notice for the first time, Forgiveness. Now, this is not written anywhere else except in this passage. For the first time, 
forgiveness of sins comes not because someone has confessed. Remember 1 John 1 verse 9, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from, the, from our unrighteousness. You don't find this in this passage. You simply find Jesus Christ looking at the faith of the four men and on the basis of their faith, he looked at the, the, the young man and he said to him, son, your sins are forgiven. For the first time, forgiveness is not based on confession, confession or repentance, but it is based on the faith of the other. Now, that's the definition of grace. Grace is when someone else is doing something that is good, and their goodness translates in your benefit. You benefit from their goodness. Grace, it is when Jesus Christ dying at the cross for us and we benefit from the fruits of his death. That is grace. Now, notice what is taking place. In, he calls him son. Now, we know that this was not the son of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was not married and this was not his son. But he's using the word son, not in a biological sense. He's using the son is in a spiritual sense. And in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament, we read so many stories, even some parables that were related by Jesus Christ, where there was this man who sent his sons to the fields and the other one refused, but later on he went. And the other one said, I will go, but he didn't go. Sons are sent. He calls this young man a son. He says, son, your sins are forgiven. And, and the way he's using the word son is an indicator and an explanation of John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave or even he sent his only begotten son. So sons are sent. So in this passage, the relationship between Jesus Christ and this paralytic, it's not biology. They are not related in a biological sense, but they are related in a spiritual sense. They are related in the missionary sense. When God said in John 3 verse 16, uh, I'm going to send you my son, Jesus Christ, to take care of your sins. Sons are sent. So the relationship between Jesus Christ and God the Father, it's not a biological relationship, but it is a relationship of equals. But Jesus Christ playing the role of a son who sent, and God the Father playing the role of the one sending. Now, forgiveness came by the faith, on the basis of the faith of the four men. Now there were people who were sitting in the room and they said, what, what's wrong with this person? Why does he forgive sin, sins? Uh, shouldn't be God alone be forgiving sins? This is blasphemy. And Jesus Christ read their thoughts. And he said to them, you guys have a problem that I've just forgiven the sins of this person. Let me ask you a question. What is easier to do or to say? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or is it easier to heal? So they couldn't answer that question. He said, I'll prove to you that I don't only have power and authority to forgive sins, but I can also heal. Then he turned to the paralytic and he said to, he said to him, son, get up, take your mat and go home. And he did exactly that. He took, get up, he got his map, met. Now, remember the house was jam-packed, but he, find, he managed to find his way to the door and he left and he went home. Rem Notice he was sent home, go home. He, he did not say, go to your friends. He said, go home. I want to believe by the time he got home, his friends were still at the house trying to repair the roof. But now let's come, let's bring it to a close. Let's bring it to a close. Jesus Christ asked a question to, the, to those that complained when he was doing good to this man, when he was showing, when he was giving great, dispensing grace on the basis of the faith of the four men. 
the Pharisees, the scribes who were sitting there, who managed to be in the house, but for wrong reasons. When other people, for good reasons, wanted to be in church, wanted to be in this house to meet Jesus because they had someone who was sick. People are in the house. The house is jam-packed by wrong people. But the right people, the needy people, people who need salvation are outside. So he says, Jesus Christ says to them, what is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say you're healed? Jesus Christ was simply saying, when I forgive sins, like in the Old Testament, sins are not simply deleted or simply washed with soap. Sins are transferred from one to another. Just like in the Old Testament, sins were transferred from the sinner to the lamb. And the lamb would be, trans uh, the, 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 the life of the lamb would be, I mean, the lamb would be, would, be, would be sacrificed. And the priest would have two ways of taking, of transferring that sin from the lamb into the sanctuary. He would either slaughter it and take its blood and go and sprinkle it in the sanctuary. Or he would eat a piece and carry that sin in his conscience. And then he would go into the, into the sanctuary. In this case, Christ was saying, what is easier? Don't you know that sin, you cannot just remove sin by deleting it. You need to transfer. If I forgive this person, it means someone must die for this sin. Therefore, I'm going to die for this sin. In few days, in few weeks to come, I will be dying for this sin. So this sin, when I pronounced forgiveness, sin was transferred from a paralytic into my conscience. At this moment, Christ was saying, what I have done is not easy. You are worried about my authority. I'm concerned that I'm now carrying this sin. Now, let's bring it to the close. We need to continue to bring others our friends, all their cases to Jesus. And we must believe that he will do something about them. And he did something about this case. And he healed this man. He forgave this man. Not because the man confessed. Not because the man pleaded for healing. Actually, this is the only story where the man is just passive. Things are happening on him. He He's... He is described as a son. He is carried as a paralytic. He is healed. He received uh, 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 forgiveness of sins. And after that, he is commanded to leave, to go home. He never uttered his word. When grace is at work, sinners go and tell their story at home, not around Jesus Christ. When grace is at work, Forgiveness comes not on the basis of confession, but on the basis of the other, of the faith of the other. Continue believing in Jesus. Continue bringing your friends to Jesus. Continue bringing their difficulties to Jesus. Who knows? He, would, he, would, he, would, he will look at your face. He would see faith. And on the basis of, it, of your faith, he will forgive their sins. He will heal them. He will solve their problems. May God bless us this morning as we come closer to this saving Jesus. Amen. 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 My pastor, may you kindly pray for us. Okay. Let's pray together. Father, we, we are delighted to know that we have this Jesus who, who's always looking for ways of ministering to us, looking for ways of solving our problems, looking for ways of solving the problems of our loved ones, looking for ways of solving the problems of our friends, looking for ways of solving the problems of our children or, or those that we are, who are a burden of our prayers. I pray, Father, that you listen to our prayers. We will be praying now. We will be bringing so many requests, so many prayers of praise, prayers of uh, supplications. We pray, Lord, that you will minister to all of those prayers. 
and that you will answer as you answered in this case of a paralytic. And I thank you for hearing this prayer. And I believe that you have heard and you're going to do something about it because you have promised that if we put the name of Jesus on our requests, the answer is yes. Therefore, we can as well, Lord, praise, praise you, give all honor and glory to your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.